John chapter 12 begins the final week of Jesus' life, when he and his disciples came to Bethany where he raised Lazarus from the dead. Mary and Martha made supper, and Martha served while Lazarus sat at Jesus' table. Mary anointed Jesus' feet with a pound of very costly spikenard ointment and wiped them with her hair. His disciple Judas Iscariot asked why it hadn't been sold for 300 pence and the money given to the poor, even though he was a thief who didn't care for the poor and would betray Jesus. Jesus said the letter alone, Against the day of my burying hath she kept this, for the poor always ye have with you, but me ye have not always. Many Jews believed and left their leaders to come see Jesus and Lazarus, and the chief priests consulted how they might put Lazarus to death. In Matthew chapter 21 and Mark chapter 11, Jesus traveled to Jerusalem and told two disciples to go to a village where they'd find an ass tied up with their colt, who'd never been ridden, and bring them to him. If anyone said anything, they'd say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway will send them, fulfilling a prophecy that the king would come, meek and sitting upon an ass, and a colt, the full of an ass. His disciples put their clothes on them, and Jesus rode into Jerusalem. The city was moved, asking, Who is this? And a great multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. They spread their garments in the way, while others cut and laid down palm branches, crying, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the King of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! Jesus went into the temple and saw people changing money and selling doves. He said, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. He overthrew their tables and cast them out of the temple. Many blind and lame people came to Jesus and were healed. The chief priests and scribes were displeased when they saw these wonderful things, along with children who cried, Hosanna to the Son of David. They asked, Hearest thou what these say? And Jesus asked if they'd never read the scripture, Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise. Jesus traveled with his apostles the next morning and saw a fig tree. He was hungry and thought it might have fruit even though it was still early in the season. He cursed it when he saw it had no figs. Let no fruit grow on thee henceforward forever, and no man eat fruit of thee. His disciples marveled when the tree withered, and Jesus said, If ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. All things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive them. They later passed by this tree that dried up from the roots. And Peter said, Master, behold the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. This reminded them of the people's hypocritical leaders, whose empty teachings and outward signs of holiness also did not spiritually nourish them. Jesus taught in the temple, and chief priests and elders asked where his authority came from. He said he would tell them if they would answer his question, if John's baptism was from heaven or of men. They knew if they said it was from heaven, he'd ask them why they did not believe him. And if they said it was from men, they would fear the people who held John as a prophet. When they said they could not tell, he said that neither would he tell them, by what authority I do these things. They feared and sought to destroy him because the people were astonished at his doctrine. Jesus told a parable of a man with two sons. He told the first, Son, go work today in my vineyard. The son said he would not go, then repented and went. He went to his second son and asked him to work, and he said that he would go but did not. Jesus asked which son did the father's will, and the leader said it was the first. He said that publicans and harlots who believed John would go into the kingdom of God before these religious leaders who did not repent and believe him when he came to them in the way of righteousness. Jesus told another parable about a householder who planted a vineyard, hedged around it, dug a wine press, and built a tower. He left it to his husbandmen and went into a far country. The householder sent his servants to pick the fruit, but the husbandman beat one, killed another, and stoned the third. He sent more servants, and the husbandmen did the same thing. He finally sent his own son, thinking they would show reverence to him. 
But the husbandmen saw him and said, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and seize on his inheritance, which they did. Jesus asked the leaders what the Lord of the vineyard would do to the wicked husbandmen when he returned. They said he'd destroy them and let out his vineyard to others who would deliver the fruits in their seasons. Jesus asked if they had read the scripture. The stone which the builders rejected is become the head of the corner, is the Lord's doing, and is marvelous in our eyes. The kingdom of God would be taken from them and given to a nation bringing forth its fruits. Whoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whoever it shall fall it will grind him to powder. They believed this parable spoke of them and tried to lay hands on Jesus, but feared the multitude who took him for a prophet. In Matthew chapter 22, Jesus told a parable that the kingdom of heaven was like a king who made a marriage for his son. He sent his servants to call those invited to the wedding, but they wouldn't come. He sent other servants, saying, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of the invitation. One went to his farm, another to his merchandise, and others spitefully treated and killed his servants. The angry king sent armies to destroy these murderers and burn their city. He told his servants the wedding was ready, but those who'd been invited were not worthy. He said to go into the highway, find as many as they could, and invite them to the marriage. They gathered as many both good and bad guests as they could find, and the king came to see them. When he found a man not wearing a wedding garment, he asked him why, and the man was speechless. He told his servants to bind his hand and feet, take him away, and cast him into outer darkness, where there would be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said, For many are called, but few are chosen. Pharisees tried to entangle Jesus and asked if it was lawful to give tribute to Caesar. He perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt me, ye hypocrites? And asked to see their tribute money. They brought him a penny, and he asked whose image and superscription was on it. They said it was Caesar's, and Jesus said to render unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. Then they marveled at his words and left. Sadducees, who did not believe in resurrection, said if a man died without children, then his brother would marry his wife and raise children unto his brother. They told of seven brothers who all died and left the same wife to each brother. Then she died, and they asked Jesus, In the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? He said they were mistaken and did not know the scriptures or God's power. In the resurrection, they would not marry or be given in marriage, but would be as angels of God in heaven. He'd asked if they'd read that which was spoken. I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And they were astonished at this doctrine. The Pharisees heard Jesus had put the Sadducees to silence and sent a lawyer to tempt him with a question. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Finally, no one was able to answer a word to him, and they did not ask him any more questions. In Matthew chapter 23, Jesus told the multitude and his disciples that the scribes and Pharisees sat in Moses' seat. They should watch what they said to observe and do, but not do their works, because they did not do what they said. They bound heavy burdens on men, but would not even lift their fingers to move them. They did works to be seen of men, and showed off their phylacteries, a small leather box with Hebrew texts worn by Jewish men to remind them to keep the law. They enlarged their garments' border fringes so others would see how strictly they kept the law. They also loved the uttermost rooms at feasts, and chief seats in the synagogues to be seen of others, and to be called rabbi in the market. Jesus said to not be called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren, not to call any man your father on the earth, for one is your father, which is heaven, or be called masters, because their only master was Christ. He called the scribes hypocrites, who made clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within were full of extortion and excess. They should first cleanse what was inside the cup and platter, and the outside would be clean. 
They were like whited sepulchres that appeared beautiful outward, but within were full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. Jesus called them serpents, a generation of vipers, and asked how they could escape the damnation of hell. He'd sent them prophets, wise men, and scribes who were killed and crucified, scourged in their synagogues, and persecuted. All the righteous blood shed upon the earth would come upon them, from Abel to Zacharias. He said, O Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Their house was left unto them desolate, and they would not see me henceforth, till ye say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. When Jesus told them what death he should die, they said they'd heard that Christ abideth forever, and asked why he said the Son of Man must be lifted up, and who is this Son of Man? He said, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. Then he left and hid from them. While many rulers did not believe Jesus, even though they saw many miracles, some did believe him, but loved the praise of men more than the praise of God, and did not confess him, because the Pharisees might put them out of the synagogue. And this is Matthew 21 through 23, Mark 11, Luke 19 through 20, and John 12 in the New Testament. Look for hidden images located in this video. You can support PonderFun by visiting our Etsy site, PonderFun.com website, and our Facebook page to find more fun things to do. Please like and share these videos with anyone you think might enjoy them. Also, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching, and find some time this week to ponder.